This work is about why you should help volunteers making an enormous contribution to keep the red knot from becoming extinct. While protecting the Delaware horseshoe crabs, these birds depend on. It's a, a total mistake to think that one person can't make a difference. The power of one is what will save this planet, not politicians, not uh, people doing their very best to save a species. It's actually the individual uh, citizen of countries around the world. Red knots come to the Delaware Bay in May. Since bay studies began in 1998, red knots have decreased by 50 to 75 percent. The bay horseshoe crab population has also been showing signs of stress. The red knots depend on horseshoe crab eggs in the Delaware Bay to fuel their non-stop flight to the Arctic, where they breed and lay their eggs. A shorebird study in Delaware is headed by Kevin Callis, assisted by Greg Breeze and Gene Woods. Volunteers come from around the world to find out why the red knot is threatened with extinction. I'm Nigel Clark from the British Trust for Ornithology and I've been working on shorebirds for the last 40 years and been coming to Delaware Bay since 1998 to study this wonderful spectacle that we have in Delaware Bay. From the birds' point of view, they are migrating halfway across the world between their winter and their summer quarters, and this area is vital to them. So actually having this opportunity to come here and feed is just vital for the birds. If there's no food here, they get from their wintering area on their way up to the Arctic, they get here and they would find no food, not be able to put on enough weight, and wouldn't be able to go and breed. This is a local issue since the birds depend on horseshoe crab eggs in Delaware Bay. It is also a global issue because the red knot is just one of many species threatened worldwide. We're doing this to the planet. Uh, species are disappearing like crazy and uh, the predictions for the next hundred years are horrid. Uh, we could lose as much as, you know, 60 percent of the species on the face of the earth and humans are but one of those. Humans are destroying habitats that very long distance migrant birds use to get from place to place. They're like 747s, miniature 747s. They, they fuel up, take on a full load of fuel, they fly five to 10,000 kilometers and they set down somewhere like in the Yellow Sea estuary in China, which is a pristine uh, place uh, that was a pristine place, which all the three million shorebirds from Southeast Asia and Australia were refueling to go to the Arctic. These birds can reach Delaware Bay in maybe only 10 days or even eight days from north of Patagonia in Argentina. It's more than 10,000 kilometers. Birds are skin and bones on arrival. This coincides with the time during which horseshoe crabs lay their pearly green eggs on the beaches of the bay. Red knots are captured using cannon nets. This is done to collect data to determine why the population is in decline. It takes many people to assist with the capture. Kevin's agency also studies a living fossil, the horseshoe crab, found on our planet for over 250 million years. Like the red knot, their numbers were in decline. Since 1998, various conservation measures have been enacted, including increasing harvest restrictions to protect horseshoe crabs. This in turn has provided the red knots with an abundance of eggs. Studies seem to confirm this increase. Well, people who live in Delaware should think where they live is important, and the horseshoe crab can show the health of the bay, which makes up a large part of Delaware. It's a bioindicator of the health of a, of a system. Given the conditions that we've seen this year, I think we really are seeing uh, a difference. We're seeing increases in horseshoe crab populations. We're seeing increases in, in the numbers of eggs on the beaches. 
and all that points in the direction of giving us what we need and showing that we're, we are having a positive response to some of the conservation actions that we've enacted. This is the story of the power of one. One bay, one group, one stopover. Efforts undertaken by individuals and volunteers may now be paying off. The solution to stopping this decline is ultimately in the hands of both individuals and volunteers along the flyway. The vital role that Delaware Bay plays in conservation is absolutely amazing. These birds are coming in here, coming from South America, some of them right at the southern tip of South America. They stop here to fuel up, putting on, doubling their weight in just a couple of weeks. We're talking on the order of 20 million horseshoe crabs were estimated to be spawning on, right here in the shores of Delaware Bay uh, in May of 2003. And uh, really there's every indication that we have so far that you know, you know, the population has, has grown since then. According to Kevin Callis, we are seeing the first signs of successful management actions. But it will take longer to see if more horseshoe crabs translate to a higher number of red knots. DuPont Nature Center at Nispillian Harbor is a wildlife observation center on the Delaware Bay. The small beach has been protected because it provides a lifeline to the red knot. There is no other site of this size in the world on which an entire bird population depends. On the flyway, other individuals are trying to protect critical feeding and staging areas for the red knot. In Argentina, Patricia Gonzalez works relentlessly to protect other refueling areas. She looks for survivors at stopovers from Tierra del Fuego, at the tip of South America, and all along the coast as they approach the Delaware Bay. I'm not sure if you um, can feel what could be for a person in my town to feel that the town where he lived for all their life is important because a little bird that can fly more than 10,000 kilometers directly to a place like Delaware Bay. Stopping the decline of the red knot will ultimately depend on the efforts of many dedicated individuals along the flyway. Why do these people volunteer? So by understanding what's happening to red knots, for example, we're really actually understanding what's going to happen to and what is happening to human societies across the globe. Risha Gonzalez says there are no borders for the red knots. This kind of project is only possible thanks to the network of researchers, volunteers, and communities that are being created throughout the flyway. The Red Knots are teaching us about collaboration. I'm from uh, Westchester, New York, a small um, uh, town on the Hudson River. Now, do you, why did you come here today? Visit With, here often? Yes, and I think it's important for us to be role models for our kids, to appreciate nature and to be respectful and to leave as small of a footprint uh, as possible. If we want to preserve human existence, we must preserve nature. If we do not, we may no longer be able to feed ourselves.